We've analyzed hundreds of VODs from Season 3 and found that most Melee are making the same mistakes in every dungeon. And we promise that if you can avoid at least some of the mistakes we showed today, then you will see noticeable gains in your IO score. We're confident in saying this because for over 10 years, we here at Skillcapped have found that by focusing on a few key fundamentals and by minimizing simple and avoidable mistakes like the ones we will cover today, that any player can hit their goals faster than they ever thought was possible. We've even rolled out brand new dungeon courses on our website that teach tricks and strategies and bite-sized guides that you can learn before your next run. We even have a full course dedicated to teaching advanced melee mechanics that are guaranteed to make you a better player no matter what class or spec you play. As always, we continue to offer a rank up guarantee where we promise that you will gain at least 500 IO score while using our guides. So after this video, visit the links below with an exclusive discount code to sign up for skillcap.com today. Anyways, back to the video. The biggest mistake we found repeated across all dungeons was being greedy with uptime. We are confident that this is the most important problem to fix if you want to climb. You see, there is a problem in Mythic Plus and we're all guilty of it. We want our damage to be high at all times, but sometimes mechanics get in the way, causing a loss in uptime and the feeling that we aren't doing enough DPS to a boss or priority target. So what winds up happening are situations like you're about to see here, where this group of melee try and greet a bit of extra damage before moving away for soul rend, and now have to frantically deal with killing the mobs directly next to the spiders. Now thankfully, no one in the group died, but this situation could have easily gone much worse and was easily avoidable by just sacrificing a tiny amount of damage. And if there is one takeaway we want you to learn from this entire video, it's this. Stability is always more important than damage. Trying to squeeze in some extra DPS or straight up ignoring mechanics for the sake of pumping up your logs might seem tempting, but consistently being greedy is never beneficial. But what you saw earlier wasn't the worst case of greed we've been seeing in Season 3. During the Ancient Protectors fight in Everbloom, we can see another example, where this warrior will try and maximize uptime by staying in melee range instead of baiting the pedals away from the stationary boss. And maybe without knowing, they have just added unnecessary damage for the healer to deal with, and have even made it harder to cleave two bosses at once with a sea of green puddles standing in the way. The fix to this is simple. If you're willing to pull away for just a second or two, not only are you preventing more damage on the group, but in turn you might actually see a DPS increase since it's now easier to safely cleave two of the bosses at once. We can see an almost identical problem on the Coalesce Time Mob and Galakron's Fall, where melee try and get greedy during Chrono Burst, failing to pull away and then blasting the entire group with damage. You might have seen groups on Twitch manage this mechanic without fully spreading out, but as you can see here, it requires personals and even external CDs to live, which we know can be incredibly rare in any pug environment. What you will find is that, once again, melee and hierarchies are willing to sacrifice a few seconds of damage in order to maintain stability for the group. This is the winning mindset that carries the hardest, especially in pugs. Stability can also be achieved by interrupting even when it doesn't seem necessary. Here on the Heartsbane Triad, melee will get the most value by kicking the non-active witches, since the priority witch only deals tank damage. And since our tank here is a blood DK, our ret putting their kicks into Sister Malady is a complete waste since blood DKs can easily survive her damage. Again, what you'll find in higher keys is that melee aren't simply tunnel visioning damage or interrupts on this fight, and are instead focus kicking the inactive sisters because by doing so they add more stability to the group. And speaking of kicks, this is yet another area where melee are making a very simple mistake, even if they don't know it. By now you should know that the Confessors are probably the most important casters in Taldazar, having not one, but two high priority spells that need to be kicked. Many melee get in the habit of stunning first, thinking that it's more efficient to get their higher cooldown CD out of the way to stomp the second cast with an interrupt. Hopefully you can see the potential mistake with this logic. If there are two casts that need to be interrupted back to back, then your kick should always be prioritized first and then your stop second, because by doing so you will give your lower cooldown kick time to recover, which now gives you a third interrupt that wouldn't have been possible if you had instead kicked second. That's why you need to get into a simple routine, remembering to kick first and stop second so you can kick once more. And that's exactly what we will see our high rated player do here, where they stop the first cast with a kick, and then the second cast with a stun. And as you can see, their kick actually gets a cooldown recovery period during the stun, opening up the possibility to kick a second time. Well, as long as we stay alive. 
Doing so achieves the goal of chaining your interrupts for as long as possible, which is something that we fail to see Melee do, especially on intense pulls like the first hallway in Throne of Tides, where it's vital to interrupt the oracles. Once again, on these mobs or any other pull where you need to stop multiple casts, the logic is always going to be the same. Kick first and stop second, which allows enough time to pass for your kick to come up once again. The value of your interrupt is huge as a melee DPS, since it has a much lower CD compared to most ranged, and in order to tap into that value, you need to be efficient with your disruption. The next mistake we discovered was melee dying to some of the most frustrating and sometimes confusing frontals in Season 3. Lady Valandris Ravencrest is the first mini boss in Black Rickhold, who has a lethal ability called Strike Down, which is really difficult to avoid for a few reasons. You see, unlike most frontals, Strike Down doesn't have a clear visual, and covers 180 degrees around Lady Ravencrest with a 10 yard range. So even if you are slightly off to the side, you will get hit, which is an almost guaranteed one shot if you don't have active DR. Now of course, most of you already know to avoid frontals especially when they have a very clear visual. But there is one more hidden cleave just like Lady Ravencrest that you need to avoid. The last boss of Everbloom can actually cause issues on tyrannical weeks if you aren't careful, with the flourishing ancients. These mobs also can pack a punch with their lumbering swipe, which again doesn't have a clear visual. While the damage isn't as lethal, this fight is already quite healing intensive, so you can't really afford to be lazy. Of course, the fix to any frontal is to just not get hit. Thanks, skill capped. But seriously, there is almost no situation where it's going to be bad to stand behind any mob. So just be more careful with your positioning and you can avoid a ton of headaches. And speaking of positioning, our fourth mistake is not abusing hitboxes. This is a concept we've covered before in our melee course and is more practical than you might think. Here, we can see the boss's hitbox by using the targeting circle on the ground. It's obviously really big, which means the boss can be hit from a longer distance. But notice here how our Demon Hunter is well within the interior of the hitbox, which means they have to move more to dodge the spikes, which are closer together near the center of the circle. Remember that some melee, including this Feral Druid here, have extended range on all of their melee attacks, which means for these specs, you are doing way more work than actually needed, since you could simply move less by standing slightly further away. Now if we look at a high rated player on the same boss, you can instantly tell that they barely have to move because they are standing on the far side of the hitbox. On Eridicron, there is a practical benefit to abusing hitboxes, but there are very few cases, if any, where it's beneficial to stand inside of the targeting circle. It can even be risky to stand directly on top of some mobs with larger character models, since by doing so you make it harder to see AoE that might be directly below the mob. There are even some bosses, like the Manifested Timeways, who have a much larger hitbox than the ground visual suggests. And by abusing maximum range, it can be easier to play this boss's mechanics. Our next mistake is something that our healer expert begged us to put in this video. In his own words, he said, please watch your aggro on pull. There is a combination of situations where aggro can be an issue. First off, if your spec deals massive front-loaded damage, like Fury Warrior, Havoc DH, or Rep Paladin, then your damage can pull aggro on pull during cooldown windows. Now, if you combine front-loaded burst with a tank like Blood Decay and Guardian Druid, who can struggle to generate threat on pulls, then you have a recipe for drawing aggro and potentially dying. These tanks need to spend some resources building damage reduction during pulls, which means they have fewer damage globals to generate threat. Some pulls are more dangerous than others. Bigger pulls where mobs are spread far apart, like the first pull on Throne of Tides, can be exceptionally dangerous since your tank will be having to be making big moves to get every pack clumped together, all while possibly needing to spend resources on building damage reduction. Another pull where this can happen is with these Spiderlings and Black Rook Hold while traveling up the stairwell. Here your tank is needing to make a big movement in an awkward space, which means they might struggle to generate aggro while also building DR. In these cases, or on other big pulls like the Start of Everbloom, it's worth it to sacrifice a few seconds of burst damage in order to let your tank set up the pull first. Remember the golden rule. Stability is more important than damage. Your damage will be there, and will be even more valuable once the pull is set. So you should be willing to delay a small amount of damage in order to make sure your healer has the easiest life. And speaking of making life easier for your healer, there is one thing healers love more than anything else, utility. Our last and final melee mistake is neglecting this vital part of your toolkit. There's a reason why Augmentation Evoker has dominated for the last two seasons, and it's not their damage. It's the fact that evokers make your group feel immortal. 
While you might not have nearly as much utility as Augmentation Evoker, you at least have some. And if you're lucky enough to play a spec like Rep Paladin, you definitely have more than others. Always remember the golden rule of Mythic Plus. If you play Paladin, you need to be taking advantage of your entire toolkit. Paying attention to your party's HP to bop, sack, or even freedom when needed. Players like Thanner will tell you that the best melee to play with are people who have a healer-like brain, always looking out for the group and doing everything they can to maintain stability. Even if you play a melee which has limited utility like a Fury Warrior, you should still passively glance at your team's HP bars during critical moments when you know there will be a lot of group damage. A well-timed rallying cry can be a difference maker in preventing a wipe, because remember, your HP bar isn't the only one that matters. Alright, and now you know the biggest mistakes melee players make that hold them back from climbing. If you're still feeling stuck when you just can't rank up no matter how hard you try, then Skillcapped is the solution you've been looking for. There you can learn more melee tips in our mechanics course that go hand in hand with our class specific damage guides that teach you simple tricks and tell you what mistakes to avoid if you want to master your spec in Season 3. Still skeptical? Don't worry, as you can try out Skillcapped completely risk free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, you get your money back, no questions asked. You can unlock this game-changing opportunity right now through the link below. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to get the rank you've always wanted. All right, that's it for today's video. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.